Right. We're blessed in the city. We're blessed in the field. We're blessed when we come and when we go. We cast down every stronghold, sickness and poverty must cease. For the devil is defeated. We are blessed. We're blessed in the city. We're blessed in the field. We're blessed when we come and when we go. We cast down every stronghold, sickness and poverty must cease. For the devil is defeated. We are blessed. Late in the midnight hour, God's going to turn it around. It's going to work in our favor. Yes, yes. Late in the midnight hour, God's going to turn it around and around and around and around. We are blessed. We're blessed. We're blessed in the field. We're blessed when we come and when we go. We cast out every stronghold, sickness and poverty must cease. For the devil is defeated. We are blessed. Amen. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Amen. We are blessed. Blessed. Yes, we are. Wow. All right. I'm going to read. Thank you so much, Rashad. I won't lay you off. I won't I won't put you on probation. You still got your job. <laughs> that was real nice. Wasn't it nice? Wow. Rashad, you saved us. <laughs> That's right. Okay, let's see. Um, verse, uh, this is 1 Peter chapter 2. Wow. Chapter 2, verse 1. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile, and hypocrisies and envies, and all evil speakings, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby. If so be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious, to whom coming is unto a lot a living stone, disallowed indeed, or rejected indeed, of men, but chosen of God and precious, ye also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore, also, it is contained in Scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be con. Found it. Mm, mm, mm. Wow. Unto you, therefore, which believe, he is precious. But unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed or rejected, the same is made the head of the corner, and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. But ye, listen you guys, are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, and some of y'all are peculiar. Oh, sorry, let me get back to the word. <laughs> a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness unto his marvelous light, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul, having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak evil against you as evil doers, they may by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. 
Amen. God bless you. Listen, God wants us to shine as lights. He wants us to feed off of his word like a baby nurses off the breast of his mother. Why? When you look at the baby's breast milk, the breast milk is full of nutrients. The breast milk is full of antioxidants, correct? And the antioxidants helps our system as babies reject sickness, bacteria, harm, right? Now, when you nurse off of the milk of God's word, God's word protects you from the elements of the world, from sin, from the contaminants of sin, from the curse of sin, from the setbacks of sin, from the failures, from all the, all the problems that come as a result of poor sinful choices, from poor sinful influences. We are protected. We are the people of God. Mm, mm, mm. We're the people of God, called by his name, called out of dark and delivered from shame. One holy race, saints everyone, because of the blood of Christ, Jesus the Son. Don't forget who you are. Don't forget who you are. You feed yourself according to who you are. You dress yourself according to who you are, right? If you're going on a hot date and, and he or she looks fine and you want to get dressed up, you say, okay, we're going to McDonald's or we're going to a five-star restaurant. Well, if you go to a five-star restaurant, what are you going to do? You're going to dress accordingly and when you get there you're going to eat accordingly and hold your napkin accordingly you know how it goes well when you walk with god and you feed your soul you feed your soul as if you're feeding royalty because you are a royal priesthood you don't give yourself junk food you have to monitor and manage the temple of god which is your body. You have to monitor and manage the temple of God, which includes your mind, your heart. You have to guard your heart. You have to renew your mind by the washing of the word. We're back to the milk of the word. The word is all important in our lives. We need the word. We need the word for direction. We need the word for correction. We need the word for healing. We need the word for comfort. We need the word for rebuke. We need the word for growth. We need the word for insight, understanding. You need the word to be alive, to remain alive. So I want to encourage you, feed on this word. Feed on this word will tell you who you are. This word will tell you what your life All is about. All participants are muted, and they can unmute themselves. This word will tell you what God has planned for you. This word will tell you what God wants to do in you. This word will tell you what to hope for, what to look forward to. God's word is all encompassing it includes everything it answers questions god's word is alive you have got to be willing to read god's word god's word will teach you social graces god's word will teach you poise and etiquette god's word will educate you it will teach you human beings it will teach you their mannerisms. It will teach you their ways, good, bad, and ugly. So that you won't be surprised when someone you did really good things for turns their back on you. You won't be shocked when somebody tells a lie on you. Why? Because you're not only becoming acquainted with the beauty of Jesus Christ, you're becoming acquainted with his sufferings, which means when people turn their back on you, they lie on you, they abandon you, guess what? 
Remember, you remember when you read what happened to Jesus. One day, Hosanna in the highest. Glory to God, right? The next day, crucify him. People are fickle. The word teaches you that. The word will stop you from being so, so shocked when life hits you on your blind side. The word will teach you how to handle your emotions and how to handle your enemy, the devil. The word will give you backbone if you are really a jelly bat. The word will give you boldness if you're really a wimp. The word will give you confidence when you're totally insecure. When I say this word, it's an all, it's an answer all. It is, because this word is God. John 1, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God, and the word was God. And further on it says, and the word became flesh, and we beheld his glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. That's dealing with Jesus. Jesus came in the word, wrapped in flesh. We need this word. We need to feed off of this word. When you eat the word, you eat God himself. You are ingesting everything about God. And everything about God girds you up, strengthens you on the inner man, heals you on your weak side, props you up, aims you forward, prepares the way in front of you, makes the crooked places straight, the rough places smooth. If you're rough around the edges, he'll smooth you out. He'll polish you up. I'm telling you, he uses life to do so. But you, while you navigate through life, you must feed off of this word. You can't live without it. You can't live saved without it. You can live unsaved without it, yeah. But you're not living, you're existing. But you can't live saved. You can't live a life of power. You can't live a life of revelation without this word. If God wants to correct something in you, he can lead you to scripture. I didn't know I was poor and needy until God led me to scripture. The poor and the needy. The poor and the needy. Every scripture he gave me, poor and needy. That's what you're trying to say. Trying to say I'm poor? I'm needy? Well, golly, am I needy? Am I really needy? Yes. And it took the word to open my eyes to that fact. If you really, really, really want to grow, if you really want to get to know yourself, the up part of yourself, the down part of yourself, the strong part of yourself, the weak part, you can only know it through God. And God will show you a lot of yourself through the mirror. God's word is a mirror. God's word is food. God's word is medicine. God's word or the clothes you put on your back, the armor of God. God's word is your navigator. God's word is your traffic cop. God's word is your governor. Do, don't, wait, slow down, slow your roll. You're drifting out of lane, get back in your lane. Watch and pray. Don't just pray, watch and pray. You need your word. And I admonish you, get in your word. You really need your word. You need, you don't realize how your survival is based on the word of God. You can't live any higher than you know. That's why God says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. Sad part is a lot of them refuse knowledge. Don't refuse it. Don't leave your Bible sitting on the countertop collecting dust. Don't use it as a paperweight. Don't use it as a cup holder. Now, this is, is not going to be long because I am really trying to pace myself. But I want you to know God wants you to use his word. His word is your telephone to God. 
There are times when you're asking God questions and you can't hear his voice, but God will put a scripture on your mind. And guess what? You read the scripture and the answer to your question right where he told you to read it. If you only knew all that God's word is. Get in it. Dig into it. You don't like to read? Play tapes. Ask God to show you. See, this is what I love about God. If you don't want to just read it, read it, read it, read it, just to read it, ask God to show you what to read, what pertains to you the most right now. What does he want to teach you right now? What does he want to open your eyes to right now? What, what areas does he want to correct you in? Show me, Lord. I remember one time I, when I, while I was taking care of my husband, I gotta cool off a minute. I've just been rushing. Hang on. Well, I was taking care of my husband. I sat there and I was getting uptight. I was getting a little ticked. I was tired of being called on. And I kept asking God, Lord, help me, help me, help me. Because I didn't want my husband to hear that in my voice. I knew my husband was my ministry at that point. Not preaching, not going out singing. My husband was my ministry. That was my season. And I wanted to do it well. So what happened was I went upstairs to sit on the side of my bed. And I asked God to help me because I felt myself getting angry. And feeling impatient and short with him. And you know how they say fake it till you make it? I felt it, but I, I didn't allow him to hear it. But I was still feeling it. And that didn't make it easy. So I sat on my bed and I said, Lord, help me, blah, 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 blah. What did the Lord do? He led me to scripture that said, forsake wrath. I believe it's in Psalms 37. I'm not sure. Forsake wrath. Now, this is a trip. He told me where to look. I opened the book. I'm reading, reading, reading. Bam. Forsake wrath. What was the thing I was dealing with? Wrath. Impatience. Short temper. Short fuse. And as soon as I read, check this out. That's why I say he's a governor. As soon as I read that word, the frustration, the anger, the short temper, it left. It was just poof, gone in a puff of smoke, just like that. Didn't feel it anymore. Didn't have to deal with it from that day till the day my husband passed away. God's word will plant stuff in you that's not there. Things you need to make it through the difficult time you're dealing with. God's word equips you. Okay, I'm not going to go on and on, but I just want to share with you. You need God's word. You need to feed off of it, eat off of it, snack off of it, nibble off of it, suck off of it, drink from it. But you need God's word. God bless you. Whew, okay, everybody, we'll open up our mics and we are done.